Overpowered champions and annoying to play against kits, some things are just created to be hated. Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be taking a look at 10 of the most hated champions in League of Legends. Everybody hates a champion for one reason or another, but we're sure that you'll agree with one, if not all the champions on our list today. We're going to be diving into why everybody hates them as well as what stereotypes they usually carry. Let's not waste any more time and let's dive right on in. Starting us off strong, we've got to talk about Yumi. Yumi has easily claimed the title of the most hated enchanter in the game. For some, it's due to the fact that she can be incredibly broken at times. Paired with the hyper carry, Yumi is also able to empower their damage while using their insane healing to keep them alive. Riot continues to nerf her, but she is able to maintain her spot as a strong pick when paired with things like Twitch, Hecarim, or Kane. Her power is the least of it, however. Yumi holds a big stereotype of being one of the most useless enchanters in the lane that is incredibly easy to play. The community collectively agrees that she can sit on a carry and press a single key in order to win the game. Whether or not this is true is up to your own opinion, but that being said, no one can argue that a lot of Yumi players embrace the stereotype by simply sitting AFK on their carry, especially during the laning phase. At a higher level of play or within the top Yumi mains, they'll include constant poke, build versatility, summoner timers, and will juggle their passive properly. On the bright side, Riot is looking to rework Yumi and hopefully it'll be enough to remove a massive amount of hate towards her. Moving on to our next pick, we've got the Enchanter that received a ton of hate before Yumi's release, Lulu. While this Zordal may not carry the same amount of hatred within the community as a few other champions, she does carry one of the most annoying spells in the game. Not only is she able to keep her allies alive with shields and heals, but she can also shut down a single target thanks to Polymorph. Polymorph feels like a Morgana Q hit you, and the entire team just watched and laughed at you being useless. It feels like it lasts an eternity, and has a decently low cooldown, and worst of all, it turns you into an adorable critter. This single ability makes the game so hard for anybody on the enemy team, but trust us, you'll never see anyone angry about this than an assassin main. Did a Zed just ult your carry? Polymorph. Evelyn just hopped out of self for a charm? Polymorph. Rengar ulting towards her? She can easily cancel his jump with her ultimate, and then laughs in his face with Polymorph. No matter what role you play, we're sure that you can all agree that Polymorph single-handedly makes Lulu an abomination to play against. Before we continue on to our next most hated champion, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new courses and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We've got a challenger level coach available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out at ProGuides.com. Anyway, let's not waste any more time and let's dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we've got everybody's least favorite Windbro, Yasuo. Ever since his release, Yasuo has been known for his high mechanical ceiling and outplay potential. He's able to kite out his enemies and style on them with ease thanks to his kit offering high mobility and skill. With this in mind, it's no surprise that the best Yasuos in the world have set the bar pretty high. This has created the stereotype of the Feast for Famine Yasuo. This effect is better known as the Yasuo is always fed on the enemy team and not on yours. Due to this high skill cap and fun kit, people tend to run it down on Yasuo way more often than not. It doesn't help that the community has collectively embraced that Yasuo's on their team will collectively end, which only tilts them further. Whether you have 1 million mastery points or you're playing a first game of Yasuo, we're sure that you'll run into a few players that will call you out. On the bright side, you'll have a few games where you just pop off and the enemy will complain about the enemy Yasuo always being better. Which is you. On the subject of win bros, we can't forget about Yone. Being slain by his own brother has caused him to take out his unbalanced power on the rift. While he doesn't hold the same stereotype as his brother, he does have an extremely unfun kit to play against. In the top lane, he can constantly skirmish with tankier enemies and sustain himself. Plus, he's incredibly hard to gank and it's difficult to freeze versus him. If you try to hold on to the wave, he can simply use his E from his turret to break it and return to safety. In the mid lane, Yone may not have as much power, but he becomes a monster thanks to his central position. With this light lead, Yone can dominate any duel in the mid lane and can easily push the lead elsewhere. His mini Zed ult paired with a strong team fighting ultimate makes him an absolute menace for everybody on the rift. Whether you're an ADC, a mage, or tank, Yone is sure to take you out swiftly and safely. Oh, and did we mention that he often abuses tank items? Next on our list, we've got Aatrox. When it comes to Aatrox, there are a few different reasons why people don't like him. For starters, his kit and rework fundamentally changed him. While you can't technically hate on Riot for this, the community still hates the new Aatrox. His old kit made him an absolute drain tank that heavily relied on attack speed and basic attacks to survive. With his revive and damage swap, Aatrox could adapt to fights as needed. The modernization of his kit removed this and then turned him into a clunkier Riven that thrives in teamfights. Most old Aatrox mains still hate his new kit because of this. Speaking of his new kit, we've got another reason why everybody hates him. He is always strong. Riot seems to love having Aatrox on a pedestal and ignores him whenever he becomes a problem. For multiple seasons now, Aatrox has been a menace in the top lane. He is easily one of the best blind picks out there thanks to his strong trading patterns and amazing scaling. In competitive play, he dominates the games by abusing short-range teams as he rolls all over them. 
Overall, his strong laning, great team fighting, and absurd lifesteal has earned him his reputation as one of, if not the most hated top laner. Now before we move on, let's not forget about everybody's favorite pro guide tradition. Today, we want to ask you all, what is one champion that you really dislike and why? Personally, I absolutely despise playing with Sona. It seems like she has no impact in lane while also scales worse than other enchanters. Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section down below what your favorites are and why. Nonetheless, let's get right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we've got Irelia. Irelia is kind of a weird combination between Aatrox and Yasuo, and we both hate those people. Anyway, people hate her because of how absurd her kit feels to play against, but it also feels like she's always going to be inting on your team. A good Irelia can easily turn any situation in her favor and utilizes high skill ceiling alongside high APM to outplay her enemies. She is easily able to go from 100 HP to 800 thanks to her Q. This often leads to frustrating fights where it seems like she just won't die and continues healing. Oh, and did we mention that her W significantly reduces damage taken? Between her insane survivability and mobility, she is the definition of a champion who is unfun to play against. On the bright side, it can be really cool to watch a good Irelia player absolutely demolish a fight. Better nerf Irelia, right? Next on our list, we got Akali. Similar to Aatrox, a lot of Akali mains just like her new kit. That being said, her old one may have been a little bit more fun, but it was just as unfun to play against. Between her insane amounts of dashes, mixed damage, and high burst, Akali was hated from her release. After her rework, this hatred has only continued to grow. Riot decided to release her with a shroud that can drop turret aggro and allows for some ridiculous dives. After this, Riot has continued to slam Akali with nerf after nerf, but it never seems like it's going to be enough. At high levels of play, she's just way too powerful of a champion thanks to her kit. Speaking of which, that's also why most players hate facing against her. Her kit is incredibly annoying to play against, as she's extremely mobile and can hide in her shroud. Even the worst of Akali players can do well enough and be a nuisance for the enemy carries, as she stalls the fight while you try to catch her. Overall, Akali can be a powerful champion in the right hands, and that's what makes her such a nightmare to balance. Speaking of nightmares, next up we've got Samara. This queen of style easily earns a reputation as one of the most hated ADCs following her release. While her win rate didn't really show any significant power, Riot was forced to nerf Samara in every way to reduce her ban rate, which I believe was about 60%. Her damage may not have been a problem for most people, but her kit fundamentally made players feel like they had no counterplay. She was a strong laner, could block skill shots, was extremely mobile with her dashes, and dealt massive amounts of AoE damage with her ultimate. On top of all of this, she had incredible healing that made her very difficult to cut down. Even now, after all the nerfs, Samara is boasting a pretty decently high ban rate. Whether or not she's OP is up to you, but the stats don't lie, and neither do we when we say that most people think that she's unfun to play against. Before we continue on to the end of the video, climbing can be difficult and sometimes you'll need help or someone to play with. If you wanted to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So, what are you waiting for? Join us. Pulling us back into the video, we've got the Rune King himself, Diego. Unlike the weak, harrowing event following his release, Diego was incredibly strong. He was a champion that many learned to love due to his versatility and allowing you to turn into any champion. That being said, his overall kit and power quickly made everybody hate him. With a single kill, he could wipe out entire teamfights as he dealt massive amounts of AoE damage while healing his entire health bar. Pair this teamfighting with a great clear, and you got a champion that can easily become pick or ban in competitive play. Riot took some time to nerf Viego to make him less destructive, but it was to no avail. They reduced his damage, his healing, and even tried to make him easier to kill, but nothing worked. People quickly found out that they could build him like an off tanker bruiser and still deal tons of damage, which only made him worse. His ability to take over team fights off a single kill can be incredibly tilting, and it doesn't help that he can use items like Jack Show, Iceborne, Sunderer, and more. Overall, Viego has been a strong champion, and his strength alongside his annoying kit makes him easily hated. Last but certainly not least, we've got Camille. This true damage queen gives Vayne a run for her money. If you thought that tanks hated Vayne thanks to her silver bolts, it's nothing in comparison to what Camille can do. She's a decent blind pick with his versatile runes for laning, which is a huge advantage in the top lane. On top of this, she can deal with tanks and bruisers easily while also offering enough burst and mobility to stop squishies. Her Q is pretty much like a mini Cho'Gath ultimate, her E gives her crazy mobility, and her ultimate takes you to the Gladiator Arena so you can die to the 1000 true damage as your whole team watches. Overall, Camille is an absolute monster in the top lane, and no matter what champion you play, you better hope that she doesn't get fed. Before we finish off our video, we want to cover our honorable mention. That's right, Summoners, we're talking about everybody's least favorite Yordle, T. I mean, Fiora. Fiora's not a Yordle, but, you know, get debated. Ignore that nonsense about Yordles. Fiora, similar to Camille, has gained a lot of hatred due to her true damage. While Fiora may not deal as much as quickly, she more than makes up for it with her amazing pushing power. Overall, she can parry literally everything in the game, including summoner spells. Most people in the league community hate Fiora because of her true damage and the fact that if you leave her alone for 10 seconds, your entire base disappears. 
And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our Pro Guys family at ProGuys.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video. But until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.